Welcome to Muskegon Rising, a community service project of the Muskegon Rotary Club. Our purpose is to create lasting positive change. We've been doing that here since 1916. So let's get started. Hello and welcome to Muskegon Rising, a podcast hosted by the Muskegon Rotary Club. I'm Aaron Mikey, your host, and today I'm here with Joel Camp from Pigeon Hill. Welcome, Joel. Thank you. Thanks for having me. So, Joel, how did you start brewing beer? Well, um, I, my previous career is in public accounting, and when you got to go through those tax seasons, you, you get a little thirsty. So, I, you know, I'd brew up a bunch of beer and get me through those tax seasons, and then I really found I loved that hobby. So, I kept brewing beer at home for years, and I knew I always wanted to start my own business and kept on going, right? So I, I brewed beer by myself, and then in the community, there was a couple of homebrew clubs that, that started up, and I joined those. I got to meet other brewers, and some of those people still work at Pigeon Hill, which is pretty cool. It's just lifelong friends now. And um, we put together a team with, you know, I'm a CPA. We got a liquor lawyer, Michael, and then Chad is a design engineer and does uh, like the, the furniture and the manufacturing, lean manufacturing stuff. And, you know, we have Chris and Rhino I met in the homebrew club as well. And we all brewed really great beers. Figured we'd make a, a run at starting in the business. So that's kind of how I started. That's pretty amazing. You have an engineer, an accountant, and yeah. a lawyer. Yeah. Uh, all brewing beer together and, and making really great beer in, in our community. Um, uh, you're not a recovering accountant, though, because you still do accounting at Pigeon Hill, and you serve on the chamber board with me, yep. and you do the books there as well. So, yep. um, so what was your turning point with your brewing in your garage when you thought, wow, I think I've got something that I've worked pretty hard on, and I think other people would enjoy this? That's a great question, and I know exactly the moment. The moment was... When I realized that our homebrew stopped tasting like homebrew, it started tasting like the beer that we could buy at the store. And there was just like a turning point there. I was like, all right, this is good enough to start a business and do this, you know, brew, make a brewing company. At the time, Muskegon didn't have any brewing, Muskegon County, or, I mean, you had to go down to Spring Lake or to Ludington or Grand Rapids. So we were kind of like in a craft beer desert here in Muskegon. So we weren't necessarily the first ones to open, but here we are, we opened, and 10 years later, it's been a wild ride. And 10 years this year yeah. for Pigeon Hill Brewing yeah, in Muskegon. a couple months ago. And you started out in a small shop on Western? Yep. And you've grown. So what's going on now? You've got the Brewer's Lounge. How, how, does, that, how does that work? What's that feel um, compared to where you started downtown? Um, it feels similar but different. It kind of both at the same time, if you will. Um, like I said, it's been a wild ride, and we started in the small place down on Western, and we pretty much outgrew that in like the first six months. So I was looking for production space, which is kind of what landed us where Sociable is now. Um, so for years, from like 2016 to 2019, we had our production brewery there. So then I had our tap room with tap room brew system, like our small pilot system. I mean, it was our main brew system to start, but turned into our pilot system. And then we bought a 20 barrel brew system and put it down at 441 West Western where Sociable is now. And then we kind of outgrew that too and the small tap room. So then we had, I was looking for land. We were looking all over the place and we could have ended up in Norton Shores. Like there was a industrial park. I mean, I needed an industrial building to brew and distribute from right so i need a loading dock and tall ceilings and to house all this stuff so we we looked all over the county um and then one day i sent um frank peterson an email kind of jokingly really it's like hey why don't you sell us one of those parking lots across from the arena because there's two big parking lots and he's like well let's talk so that kind of led one thing to another and then we built that building and so then we had production there. We had our 441 West Western location, which we'd emptied that out. We did a warehousing agreement there for a little bit, knowing we wanted to develop something there. 
and then the original tap room. And then once the lease ran out at the lit original tap room, we moved that tap room and consolidated on 4th Street where our brewer's lounge is now. And then we still kind of just held on to the Western Avenue property. And then we ended up developing it into Sociable. So it's kind of a musical chairs. It's been a fun 10 years building and incurring debt and stress and more gray hairs. <laughs> Well, the gray hairs are better than no hair, right? Be careful what you ask for. Uh, you know, the, the thing that strikes me about your beer is the names. Uh, Beach Please, No Dignity, mm -hmm. Juicy IPA, Walter Blondale, Stage 5 Clinger. I had to read them. Yep. Um, where do you, come, you and your, your colleagues come up with these names? It's that from really many different angles. So it kind of just depends on the timing and maybe how buzzed we are at the time. <laughs> we're having a good time and uh, we just kind of come up with ideas sometimes like we come up with a name and then we brew a beer for it or we come up with a beer idea and then we pick a name for it so it just kind of depends there's a lot of movie references in there a lot of inside jokes in there just kind of whatever sounds good whatever's happening in the back storeroom when you're trying the beer yeah and and some of it obviously beach please we've got a wonderful beach here in muskegon and yep. well, that makes sense but uh some of those, I'm like, wow, that is really crazy. Uh, you also brought back Lake State Lager, and, and that's an old, old name, beer from Muskegon. What, what brought you on to do that? Uh, we wanted to create a nice, light, crisp lager, because that's kind of where the industry was going in the last couple of years. Um, something that could hit a price point, like below $10 a six-pack on the shelf. And... Um, so we, we developed the recipe, and we were trying to think of the name. Um, this is one where the, brew, the beer came first, and then the name came after. It doesn't, usually it's the name and then the beer. Um, but we were, we were kind of striking out for several months on what we want to call this. And then we looked at the uh, wall that we had. And we have some old beer labels on the wall at the Brewer's Lounge that we actually brought. We brought some of those beer label signs from the, the, the original tap room. And one of them was Lake State Beer, and that used to be brewed by Muskegon Brewing Company. And we really liked the graphic, the label, and the name was not in use anymore. And we just, you know, we did all our due diligence, and we said, that's perfect. So it's been sitting right in front of us for 10 years, and here we are. We got Lake State Lager back. <laughs> yeah, that's really cool. Uh, you know, and I didn't ask, but where did you come up with the name Pigeon Hill? How did that strike you and your, your co-owners and, and eventually become the name well number one it sounds better than camps brewing company it doesn't you know camp doesn't mean a whole lot to the community yeah pigeon hill was something that i remember when i was in public accounting i went to like a community um i don't know some sort of community engagement event where they had a contest to describe muskegon you had to basically design t-shirts so everybody had to each group got to design a t-shirt we had permanent markers, and everybody's got their white T-shirt, and they're drawing stuff up. And I just remember there was a group that went up in front of the crowd and, you know, hold, held up the shirt, and all it says, where is Pigeon Hill? And at the time, I didn't know a whole lot about it. I'm not a huge history buff, but I've become much more in tune with that. Um, and it always just kind of resonated with me. So when we started the brewing company or that process, that, is just, that was on the list of names. We had 10, 15 list, names on that list. And Pigeon Hill, it was probably dismissed a couple of times, but then it always just kept on lingering, and, and it kind of grew on us. And then once we got, we decided on that name, we tried to get some logo work done, maybe a logo work on a couple of different names. And then once that, that, that uh, graphic, that logo for Pigeon Hill, we saw that, it was like, that's it, because that's going to relate to the community. It's going to kind of just ingrain us in that fabric of community and it was also kind of a good story to bring Pigeon Hill back in some form or another. We just always said we bring Pigeon Hill back in the form of great craft beer. So that's where that comes from. Well, that's awesome. And as you're talking, I'm trying to think, you know, I've been in your, your older brewery. I've been in Sociable. I've, I've been in the Brewer's Lounge. And it just kind of hit me. It's kind of nostalgic. You're a nostalgic brewery between the names and your beers and, uh, everything that you're doing brings back memories for people mm -hmm. during a, a good time having a drink. Yeah. So you partner in the community. Um, you've 
got a new partnership with Adelaine Point. Um, I, I spoke with Emily on this podcast and really had a great time. She is brilliant. Uh, how did that partnership occur, and what exactly are you doing uh, for Adelaide Point in their restaurant? Well, you know, Adelaide Point, they're opening Muskegon Brewing Company, like uh, the restaurant, and so we are brewing all the beer for them, um, kind of like contract brewing. So we're doing private label beer for them that we'll sell to our distributor in Muskegon, and, you know, they'll buy it through, you know, Tyler Sales, the distributor. Um, kind of how it came apart or came um, about is I think I'm trying to remember. I think it was Troy Wasserman who connected with Ryan, connected us with Ryan, and said Ryan wants to talk with you guys about you know brewing beer for his project coming up. So, yep, we're always game for talking about brewing and selling more beer. So, yeah, I think he hooked that meeting up, and we ended up meeting Ryan down at his uh, at the property where Adelaide Point is, and got on his boat, and we went over and had. I don't know, lunch or a drink or something at Bear Lake Tavern, which he owns too. And he was like, all right, we'll get down to business here. So how do we make this work? And it was like, pretty easy. We just name the beer, whatever you want, and we'll sell it to distributor and you buy it from them. And I was, he's like, that's it? So we, yeah, it's pretty simple. So we just sat there and had a couple of drinks and got to know each other. So, <laughs> so it's a whole new brand. Will there be different names? Uh, and it'll all be exclusively sold at Adelaine Point, or will it be available for everybody? Um, as far as I know, um, it's exclusively for Adelaide Point and Muskegon Brewing Company right now. Um, if they want to do something different with it, we can we can work with them. But I think the only idea is to, as far as I know right now, for them you know to get open and to have Muskegon Brewing Company beer on tap, and it'll be all their names. And they have some you know like their ideas and recipes, and we're guiding guiding them through the recipe development process and whatnot too. Good deal. And you mentioned, Ryan, I remember a story you told me. Why don't you tell us about the tour of Adeline Point? And I know that that podcast has been there, but I'd like to hear your perspective of walking through that. And I think your your dad or your grandfather went with you, if I'm remembering correctly. Oh, yeah, my grandfather yeah. went because he was in construction for his career and and owned um, Van Dunkler Construction. And he's every time I see him, he's talking about you know, the Adelaide Point project. So I'd asked Ryan if we'd be able to give him a tour and I kind of want to see it for myself. Um, so we met over there and we went through, well, he took us in, Ryan took us to the whole property and the golf cart and we went up into the Muskegon Brewing Company building and toured all that. And you get up onto like the main deck, we did all stories. And my grandpa, he's 94 and he, he, he did it. He climbed all four stories and, uh, Anyway, it was just the views that are up there were amazing. It's just, there's nothing else like it. That, that perspective of Muskegon is unbelievable. It almost feels like you're on an island because it's kind of out on a point and you got water all the way around you. And you can see right pretty much west, northwest, and almost see Lake Michigan over the dunes. So enjoying a Muskegon Brewing Company beer uh, with that view is going to be pretty exceptional when they open oh, a restaurant. It's going to be Incredible. Looking forward to it. So speaking of partnerships, I also spoke with Chris Zart from the Michigan Irish Music Festival, and you brew a special beer for them as well. Mm -hmm. what, what is that beer, and how did that partnership come about? Um, well, that partnership came about because we're just huge fans of Michigan Irish Music Festival. You know, that we love going to that festival. We always want to brew a stout for them. I think years and years and years ago, they had Guinness, and then there was some issue with legal or just, I don't know, whatever happened there, I'm not really sure. They didn't use Guinness anymore, and there was an opportunity to brew the stout. I think they were using some other stouts throughout the country for a couple of years, too. And then we said, we can hit this price point. We can brew this stout. It's right down the street. It's kind of a cool connection, a great story. And um, we were able to make that happen. So we do MI Irish Stout for them. We do. Beyond the Pale, uh, they had, I think, bass, and they, they couldn't get that anymore or something, or maybe it was a switch of distributors. Um, so we brew that for them, and we've always helped them out with stuff at their craft beer tent, Duff's Tavern, and we've done some ginger ale for them, some lemonade and kegs for some other mixers and stuff. So I don't know, we have a pretty good relationship with those guys. They do a great job, and we're happy to be involved. 
That's amazing. I think it's awesome to go to that one of the largest festivals in the Midwest and to be able to drink the local beer that is such high quality. So I wanted to focus on that for a minute and make sure, I mean, you're a local local person, grew up here, brewing beer locally and partnering with tons of individuals here to make sure that we have quality locally made beer. It's super exciting. Yeah, that's the fabric of community right there. All three of us that own Pigeon Hill, we all live right downtown and, you know, me and Michael were born, born and raised pretty much in Muskegon. Michael a little bit in Spring Lake, Chad from Coopersville, but uh, pretty local, yeah. And, and truly invested in Muskegon. I love where you're at. I love your locations. I want to move on to Sociable because you mentioned that briefly, and, and it's such a jewel of our downtown. I, I've had the privilege of being in there a few times for some private events. And um, just tell us what's there how you came up with the dream to to make Sociable what it is. It's fabulous. I just want to hear you talk about it more. So there's a, there's a deeper story to that whole concept. So that building used to be owned by Brunswick, who's, you know, Brunswick Bowling Lanes in, in town here. They're headquartered in Muskegon. And they owned that building decades ago. I'm not going to throw out specific dates because I'm sure I'll get it all wrong. But decades ago... Um, and they used it for their test lanes, and then it was, I don't know, Michigan Bowling or something along the lines. And there was a couple of nightclubs, and then it was empty. That's when we found it empty for our production facility. So when we were looking at either selling it or developing it, we kind of shot around the idea of doing like a, well, we all lived downtown at the time, or still do, but we recently all moved downtown. And we're like, all right, what does downtown need? Like, what do we want? You know, we want someplace fun to go to, someplace with activity, someplace so you can, you know, we get drinking and eating establishments already, but we want a little bit more than that. Um, you know, people can go to concerts, they can go to the arena events, and that's all, that's all a great part of the fabric of community, but there has to be a game, there has to be that concert. It's not a, some activity all the time. So if you want to come down on a Tuesday evening and do something, like you can go bowling. We have a full arcade um full kitchen full bar um so it was interesting as we connected with brunswick to develop the uh, the concept and we went down to florida some trade shows we visited chicago with them they showed us around these different concepts around the you know florida and chicago like like uh, punch bowl social and stuff like that and we're like man this could be really really cool in downtown Muskegon, we got the perfect spot and it was a great story it was built for a bowling alley and we're kind of bringing bowling back to Western Avenue, you know, with Brunswick, kind of like we brought Pigeon Hill back in a form of craft beer. So we kind of kept going down that road and we developed it. Um, it was, it was a tough thing to do, <laughs> but we and got you it did done. most of it during COVID, right? You were building that during yeah. the pandemic. So it yeah. made it even more challenging. Yeah. Like right after everything opened up, we were supposed to be starting to build that in 2020. Um, but we did pump the brakes for a year or two, probably about a year and a half. And then, yeah, it was the the supply chain issues, the, the scheduling issues, all of that stuff that unfolded after COVID. We went right through it. And, you know, we had to, we had to pivot and we made it happen. Beyond the beer, uh, the ceiling is the most spectacular part of that building to me. I, it's just so cool to look up and see how that's all designed and it just kind of, you can see that it used to be a bowling alley with that arched roof. Yeah. Really beautiful. Yeah. So you mentioned distribution, distribution, how far and wide is Pigeon Hill distributed? Um, right now we distribute the whole state of Michigan. So UP, Detroit to St. Joe, you know, lateral Muskegon, obviously. Um, we did send some beer down to Florida for a year or two, and then the distributor down there had some internal issues, and I don't know, that just kind of fizzled out. But um, we're just about to launch Northern Indiana Distribution. Actually, next week, I think. Or this week, actually. We're, we're sending beer down there this week, and in two or three weeks, we're going to go down there and do the actual launch. Outstanding. So all over Michigan and now Northern Indiana. Yeah. Awesome. Well, yeah. So, Joel, what, 
you've had a tremendous 10 years of growth, uh, you know, starting off small. What are your plans for growth in the next 10 years? Where do you see Pigeon Hill? The next 10 years, I see us, number one, paying down the debt that we've incurred over the last 10 <laughs> years of building and growing. The true accountant, get rid of that debt, right? Got to get rid of that <laughs> debt and get, you know, we're, we're, we're in a healthy state right now, but we can be um, healthier when, you know, if a downturn more significant than like um, COVID happens, I mean, who knows? I just want to be, I want to have that safety net. I want to have that equity built up. So, you know, it's, it's a balance of like, Building out, we have one suite that's available at uh, the Social Bowl, like next to our arcade, and we're working with um, we're working with a group that uh, is trying to bring Snurfer, uh, the old the original snowboard, back to Muskegon. So we've been kind of working with those guys and shooting around some ideas. Nothing really official yet, but I can throw it out there because I mean they're it's open and you know they they exist and it's there. But it's a cool opportunity. Um, to really kind of build that out and maybe do some specialty retail on Western Avenue. Um, other than that, you know, we're just, I've been spending a lot of time just refining the processes and getting things really efficient uh, to just kind of control costs and pay down that debt and just operate and drive our quality and our service up. So you ha- I guess the big question for me, are you having fun? Because you obviously left public accounting because it's a grind. <laughs> it's a grind. Uh, but, you know, Beer was your passion. Uh, is it still fun, or are you having a great time doing this? It's 100% fun. I love what I do. I love the team that I have around me. I love working with them. It's just we're like one big family, and I wouldn't have it any other way. Now, could I do stuff, other stuff and make more money? I probably could, but it's not really what it's all about to me. I just like to do something that's really cool and creative. I have a little creative side to me. I am a drummer, too. I like playing the drums. I haven't done it in a while. They're a little dusty, but I do have that creative side. So, like, the beer and the accounting and the business, all those things in my mind come together for me, and that's why I love really doing what I do. It kind of just satisfies all those little needs. Really awesome. Joel, is there anything that we haven't discussed that you'd like our listeners to know about Pigeon Hill? I can't really think of anything. <laughs> Well, thank you so much, Joel. I'll, I'll say the nostalgic, recovering accountant, now brewery, <laughs> brewer. Yeah. Uh, really appreciate your time here today. Yeah, thanks for having me. Thank you for listening to Muskegon Rising, where we focus on the amazing things happening here in Muskegon County. Please tune in for more episodes in the future.